Hey everyone, it's Matt Payne from F-Stop Collaborate and Listen Podcast. I'm here today to, to uh, show you one of my favorite phone apps for photography and for hiking in general and backpacking, and that is Gaia GPS. It is absolutely a lifesaver, and it's going to get you to places and get you home safely, and it's going to help you make better photos. So let's dive in. All right, so with Gaia GPS, I'm going to cover lots of different things in the app today. We are going to cover, first of all, how to find the app. We're also going to talk about navigating the app, um, pitch, pinch zooming and rotating, finding locations, adding waypoints, recording tracks, using map layers, and different use cases for map layers. We're also going to show you how to download maps for offline use, which is one of the best features of Gaia GPS. Um, and we're going to look at pre-planning uh, on the web to plan your trips so that you can download tracks uh, to your phone and have them while you're in the field. I'm also going to show you some in-the-field tips, including orientation and wayfinding and using tracks and waypoints to stay on course. All right, well, let's dive right in. So on my phone, I've got it organized so that all of my navigation is in one folder. And here's Gaia GPS. So my favorite, personal favorite layer to use is the is the USGS Topo. I'm going to show you how to navigate the application. So up here in the left, you see record. That is how you record various tracks. You also have the camera icon. You can take pictures while you go and reference them later online and on your phone. This particular tab, the these are all different things that you can access by touching them. And then you can change what they are. So right now I have it set to elevation, speed, distance, ascent, uh, my current pace, and my average speed. But you can change them to whatever you want. Up here is how you go to full screen mode. This particular button up here is how you center yourself. So let's say that I was way over here looking at some stuff. If you click on this, it'll take you right back to where you were at before. So, also, up here you have the um, plus sign. That's how you're gonna do lots of different things in the app, including recording a track, adding a waypoint, uh, creating a route, downloading maps, etc. You use this quite a lot. And then this particular icon up here is the layers. And I'm gonna turn my phone again so you can see what it looks like when you have your phone in your hand. This is the layers button right up here. Turn my phone again. Pinch zooming and rotating. So if you have a smartphone, you probably are pretty used to this, now, but if you pinch in, you can zoom out. And if you pinch out, you can zoom in on your location. The You'll notice that the um, the arrow is pointed in the direction that I am facing with my phone. So right now I'm mm, roughly facing north, but if I were to turn to my left and face west, you can see that it changes the direction of where the, the arrow is pointed. That's really helpful for when you're in the field. So I'm going to point it face forward again. Um, you can also rotate the map by pinching it and spinning it. It's kind of useful. I personally kind of like to just keep it so that um, north is up. You can do that by using the compass up here in the right hand corner. So if you touch tap on the compass, it'll recenter your map to zero. So let's look to see how you can find different locations. So let's say I was taking a trip uh, to the Grand Canyon and I wanted to go perhaps to a place called, um, let's do Lipen Point, which I know is in the Grand Canyon. So you can see it pulls it right up and you click on it. It'll actually take you to that location on the map. So here we are, Lipen Point in the Grand Canyon. 
Okay, so let's say you found your location, Lipen Point, and let's say you want to make a waypoint there. So I'm going to click on this little arrow, this little button up here, which is it's a plus sign. And let's you can do add a waypoint, and you can move it around by putting your finger on it. So let's say I just want to put it right there, and then you can hit save. You can name it, and then you can click on it with your finger or touch it, and then you can hit this eye icon and it'll show you all kinds of information about that waypoint. It says that it's uh, 236 miles away from where I am currently. Um, tells you the elevation of that point. And then interestingly, you can also up here in the right hand corner, you can get driving directions. So there you go. It pulls it up right up on Google Maps and gives you directions on how to drive there. You can see I'm seven hours away <laughs> all right so let's go back to where i'm at currently by hitting that uh recentering button at the top let's say that i wanted to take a hike to this building right up here to this building right there so i'm at a waypoint I'm going to drop it right on that building, hit save, hit save again, and now it'll, like I showed you before, you hit this error, hit the I button, and it'll tell you information about it. So it's 1.61 miles away from me. I'm going to recenter back on where I'm at now. You can see that some of my old tracks that I've recorded are starting to show up now that the app has downloaded them. And you can see that this is one where I did like a run from my house. <laughs> so let's say I wanted to know more about that particular run. I can actually touch the track and hit the eye, and it'll give me all kinds of statistics on that track. So I ran for two and a half miles, gained, it took me 30 minutes, and I gained 91 total feet. You see up here, there's a little eyeball. You can hit that to make it private so that people can't see your track. You can also hit this plus person button to send it to somebody else that you might know. Um, so you can share the link and send it to someone. One of the best features of Gaia GPS that saves my bacon all the time is recording tracks. So let's say that I was gonna take a hike um, over, into these, over into this area over here in the mountains near my house but I didn't want to get lost on my way back in the dark, maybe. So I would just hit the record track button, and as I started walking over there, it'll record a track. And then you can use that later to follow your tracks back. And that's primarily what I use it for, is to make sure that I'm not getting lost on my way home or way back from where I was hiking. You can also reference those tracks later online at GaiaGPS.com. Now one of the other great features about Gaia GPS is map layers. So there's all kinds of different map layers that Gaia can offer you. I'm going to come up here to one of my favorite areas to hike in near my home and that's the Women Uch Wilderness area here in the Needle Mountains. So you can see I've done lots of different hikes over in that area. Those are my old tracks and actually there's a couple of tracks in there that are from other people that I downloaded their tracks so that I could stay on trail and not get lost because some of these trails are very faint and hard to follow. So let's say that uh, I was curious to know what the weather might be in the future in that area. So you can use this uh, the layer button in the upper right hand corner and down here there's all of these different map layers that you can pick from. I've pulled up some of my favorite map layers but let's use precipitation forecast in the next 72 hours. So you can slide this button over and it'll change the opacity of that layer. And it'll take a minute, but then it'll show you what precipitation looks like. So you can see in the next 72 hours, there's really no precipitation forecast for that particular area. Um, if I zoom way out and look at the entire United States, you can see that the west coast of the United States is going to have lots of rain, but not so much where I'm at here close to home. Uh, you can also 
use a layer to show this. Uh, this is really great for night photographers, but you can show light pollution. So you can see different various amounts of light pollution across the country, um, which is a great way to, to know if the Milky Way is going to be visible or not. You can see down here is actually the city of Farmington, right here. And then this is the city of Durango over here. And if I zoom way out, you can see this is the front range of Colorado. So that's Denver, Colorado Springs, and Pueblo. Lots of light pollution. So I can hide that layer. Um, there's also a really great National Geographic Trails Illustrated layer that I like to use because it has different, um, I don't know, just different features on it that are really fun to use. It has trail names and shows you a lot of the different trails that are out there. So I'm a big fan of using that particular one. You can see that right now I'm on the town of Telluride and it shows you all the different trails if they're closed, when they open, um, has really great labels. You can see I've done some of the trails up here before. Um, but yeah, it's a great, great trail, uh, trail layer. You can also use it to, this one's, this one's one of my favorite, but you can also use it to show um, private land. This is great if you don't want to be trespassing. So I know there's a lot of people that do a lot of photography um, in the fall over here in the uh, near Mount Snuffles. And you can see that a lot of that area is private property. And if you zoom in, it'll actually show you who owns it. So like this one is owned by Wolfland Company. This is kind of closer to closer to Uray, but you can see all of these different areas and who owns the land. It's really fun to use this in town because <laughs> you can see who owns all kinds of property near you. And you can see right there is my house and I own it. <laughs> But it's great because you can see who your neighbors are, who owns what houses. I don't know. It's a useful layer for all kinds of reasons. It also has a United States Forest Service roads and trails layer, which I think is really useful. So if you look up here in the National Forest, it can show you all kinds of roads, National Forest roads that take you to different places. And then it also has trails. Um, so that's another layer that I like to use as well. Um, you, there's also a satellite layer. Um, if you are a um, backcountry skier, you can use the slope angle shading layer to show you what areas might be susceptible to avalanche danger. So as you can see, some of these shaded areas have higher avalanche danger like over here probably don't want to spend a lot of time um, skiing <laughs> over here in the backcountry because lots of risk of avalanche so that's a cool layer um, there's actually so many layers in here that i haven't even used before there's all kinds of hunting overlays you can see different designated areas for various types of hunting. Um, it can show you um, what, like you can ID elk units. I mean, it's, it's extensive of what it can do. So like here's Colorado. Let's say that I was a bighorn sheep hunter. <laughs> um, I'll just add the layer. Go back. There's my bighorn sheep layer. Pull it up. And now you can see it'll start showing me different layers where you can do bighorn sheep hunting. I'm guessing there's not a lot near me, but ah, here you go. So there's the, there's the zones. So S16, S53, S15. So if you're a hunter, it's a really great app for that as well because you can see your hunt your zone areas as a hunter. So we're gonna come back home. So now uh, let's um, let's talk about downloading maps. This is probably the best feature of Gaia GPS. 
you can see right now on my phone that I am um, on Wi-Fi and so that's why it's able to load all these maps but let's say that I was going to take a trip to oh let's see what's this down here this is this is Bistai Badlands down here in New Mexico so let's say I was going to do a trip down to Bistai to Badlands so the way to do that is to click on the plus plus button in the top and then do download maps and then you can change the shape and amount of map and up here in the top it'll show you how big that file will be I'm also going to change the maximum zoom for a higher resolution um, and before I do that I'm actually going to make sure that I only want it to pull up certain layers so I'm actually going to get rid of all of these extra layers and make them inactive so that they don't it doesn't download all of those because if you have them active it's going to download them so I'm just going to inactivate all these layers real quick and I'm just interested in the USGS layer it's my favorite layer so let's go ahead and download the map so again hit the plus button hit download maps change the area that you want to download make sure it's on full zoom if you want a higher resolution map it says up here that it's 8.6 megs is not a very big map um, but let's say I want a bigger map let's say I want all this area right here it's quite a lot of area actually it's a 40 megabyte file hit save you can even name it so let's say well, I'm just gonna call it Bistai hit save and then you'll see this this little spinning wheel right here you can touch that and it'll show you the status of your download um, so you can see that it's downloading the USGS layer of my Bistai map at 15 megabytes per second looks like it's all done it's, it says success I will say that sometimes these downloads can take a while so just keep that in mind um, so you have to keep your your app open just keep your phone pl phone plugged in and whatnot so let's say that I'm now in the field I'm ready to go hiking down in Bistai so I'm actually going to you would put your phone on airplane mode I'm not gonna do it now because that would lose my connection to the screen here but you can use it in, a, in airplane mode and it'll still be able to remember these saved maps down here in New Mexico and you can actually see when I zoom in on them now it doesn't take any time for it to load them because they're saved to my phone so that's usually one of the best features of Gaia is downloading maps for offline use alright alright now we're going to show you how to use Gaia GPS online to help plan your backpacking and hiking trips into the backcountry for photography probably one of my favorite things to do is to go on big backpacking trips into the Colorado mountains and capture some amazing light hitting those peaks and a lot of these areas don't necessarily have trails um, so I like to create routes in Gaia as best as I possibly can so for this particular one I'm going to show you that using the Gaia topo uh, layer you can see that there's actually pretty good trail overlays already in place for a lot of the trails um, in your in your area you can also use Gaia GPS online and overlay any of those layers that we talked about earlier so you could overlay satellite light pollution precipitation all of that kind of stuff to pre-plan your trips so in Gaia GPS online you can create routes ahead of time that you can then download to your phone and follow uh, when you're off the grid and not in uh, uh, cell phone range so to start doing that you're gonna find this little icon on the left hand side that says create route and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start your route so I been to this place before up here um, this is an area called Bear Town it's pretty hard to get to in a four-wheel drive vehicle but it gives you really great access to some of my favorite areas so just to start your route I know that this is where you park your car so I'm just gonna start there but you can drag it down and it'll actually follow these existing trails that are on the map 
Um, it just takes the program a minute to, to see them. But let's say I wanted to go to Stormy Gulch. So I take my, my arrow all the way down here to Stormy Gulch. And then you can see that it starts to see, ah, oh, yes, there's a trail that you can follow. So then I'm going to click the click it again, and it's going to end it. You can save it, and it'll calculate the distance and how much elevation gain and how much elevation loss was done in that particular section. So that's about a, a four-mile hike to from up here all the way down to Stormy Gulch. Now let's say I wanted to continue. I'm going to save it. Let's say that I wanted to continue that route and go further down to, let's say, from Stormy Gulch, maybe I wanted to cl climb up into this basin. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier because there's no existing trail. But reading these topo lines on the topo map, uh, I'm just probably going to follow this drainage up into this basin and maybe this looks like a pretty cool place to camp next to this lake up here. So I'm going to get rid of this guy. You can also pre-plot uh, the route using waypoints. So I know a lot of people like to use waypoints ahead of time. So you can use the waypoint icon over here on the left. So I click that. So let's say I want to create a waypoint right here where I'm going to camp near this lake. So I'm going to drag it over there. And then I'm going to hit save. Oh, and it knows that it's, uh, that's Trinity Lake. So, boom, there you go. Now you have an icon there. Now I, could, I can drop waypoints all the way down this route. And then when I create that route, I can follow those waypoints. And then what you can do on your phone is download those waypoints and those, uh, those routes so that you have them for offline use later. Hopefully that All right, helps. well, if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to get a copy of Gaia GPS for yourself, I can get you a little discount for that. So head over to GaiaGPS.com slash photo, and you can get a pretty good discount on one-year and five-year memberships. I know that there's two different membership options. There's the normal membership and the premium membership. I use the premium membership because it comes with all of those different map layers and allows for a lot more uh, use of the program. However, the normal membership is pretty solid too. It allows for almost all the same things. Uh, the premium membership though is awesome because you have all of those different map layers that I showed you. Um, so you can get a five-year membership for $128, which is a lot cheaper than the $200 that you normally would have to pay without the discount. And just a disclaimer, it does help me out as well. So hopefully you found it helpful and feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have about Gaia. Thanks.